explain a little bit. I mean, do you guys have a rationale behind the Chinese market rebound? Or sometimes, again, does it just get so beaten down and, and kind of left behind that these things have a way of surprising us? I think that's part of it. I mean, the Chinese market got incredibly cheap last year. It was one of the worst performers. What has also helped is we've had this coordinated, uh, not necessarily intentionally, but action by most of the world's central banks, including the PBOC, to stimulate the economies. And you're seeing risky assets respond as you'd expect. Chinese stocks are up, U.S. stocks are up, commodities are up, the dollar's been contained. You know, this is a little bit like late it's sort of early 17, where everything's going up in tandem. And here's the interesting thing about that is we often talk about some of these gauges like copper as being good economic barometers. So at a time when everyone's saying, oh, the U.S. data has been terrible, uh, you know, the flash PMI was still okay yesterday, and then the even more sensitive forward-looking stuff like copper suggests that things are better than fine. I think right now copper is responding much more to monetary conditions than it is to the economic data. If you look at the economic data, it's at best okay. It's been pretty abysmal in Europe. It's been at best mixed in the U.S. Copper, to me, is doing what a lot of commodities are doing right now. They're looking at the dollar. They're looking at lower real rates, and that's providing the support for the rally. You a low dollar kind of guy for 2019 because it'd be a break for, for some parts of corporate America. I think the interesting thing about the dollar now is it depends against what. So if we're talking about the dollar against the euro, yes, we're long the dollar against the euro. At the same time, we see opportunities in some emerging market currencies. So I think in contrast to 2018, when you generally had a stronger dollar, what we're seeing this year is a much more range-bound dollar that's good for a number of segments in, in the risky asset category, including EM and commodities. And what about U.S. stocks? So let's bring this full circle, because I know you said you think that the rally is getting a little ahead of itself, that valuations aren't cheap anymore. And I've been thinking about this with Warren Buffett's letter tomorrow and right. the $100 billion of cash they're sitting on. And for two years, he's been saying valuations aren't that compelling, meaning things just look a little too expensive. Where do we stand today? I think it depends where you look. If we go outside of the U.S., valuations actually look very reasonable, particularly in Asia. We look at Japan. We look at parts of Southeast Asia. You see a lot of stocks trading at barely you know, 10, 11 times earnings. In the U.S., it's a different story. You know, stocks were cheap-ish for about a moment on Christmas Eve, and now they've gone back to some place ahead of average. It doesn't mean that they're aggressively priced. But you can no longer say the way you could in late December, this is a cheap market. But there's always going to be unloved parts of the market, right? What would you think those, describe those as today? So I think there are a couple. You know, some of the cyclical names are actually beaten up, and that's what you'd expect. What really happened in Q4 is you had a very abrupt shift in economic expectations. One of the parts of the market get, that became particularly cheap, energy stocks. Mm. At one point, the discount of energy to the S&P 500 was the largest we've seen since at least 1995. Really? That's one part of the market that looks very interesting to us right now. So that might be a place that you would pick up a few names mm. here, despite your overall concerns Absolutely. about valuations? Yes. And, and does that mean that oil prices have to keep going higher or anything like that, or are they just simply, that they got too cheap? They got too cheap. So our thesis is not based on the notion that oil is going to 100 or even 80. Even if oil stays in the current range, call it 50 to 60 on WTI, many of these names look inexpensive.